guys, welcome back to Explore Electronics. Let us continue our discussion for the subject VLSI design and testing, the solution to model question paper. The fourth module question, that is 7a, differentiate between fault and failure with an example. Explain different types of stuck at faults with example. First, we need to define what is failure and what is fault. Failure in the sense, in a logical circuit or in the digital system, if the behavior deviates from the specified behavior, we call it as a failure of the system. Means it is not behaving as per our uh, expectation. So fault in the sense, it is a physical defect, right? like it can be a short circuit or it can be a open line or open circuit between the two ends of the circuit, we call it as fault. So for example, you can see short between two signal lines in a circuit or break in the signal line will be called as a physical defect that can be an example for the fault and the error will be usually any signal in a circuit may change from 0 to 1 if it is 0 is a correct state it will be changed to 1 as a non-correct state we call it as a fault it may happen like this so uh, the nature of fault can be classified as a logical or non-logical here they ask to different types of explain different types of stuck at faults so there are two types first logical and non-logical logical fault causes the logic value at point in a circuit become opposite to the specified value as i said here non-logical faults in indicates rest of the faults such as malfunction of the clock signal the power failure etc will be called as non-logical as the name says logical in the sense the logic value will be changed and non-logical in the sense it is not with respect to the logical value you can also read the explanation over here for more explanation. Let us go to the stuck at fault. In stuck at fault, we have two types. One is stuck at zero and stuck at one. Any node or output or input node will be stuck to a particular value like zero or one. We call it as stuck at zero or stuck at one. Stuck at zero, stuck at one faults are often abbreviated as SCA zero, SCA one respectively. In the example diagram, you can see uh, it is an AND gate with A, B inputs and output is Z, but A is stuck at value 1, means whatever the value you give it to A, it will not take that value, this A will be stuck to a value 1, it is connected to maximum voltage we can say. So this kind of explanation is required for this question, here they have asked to write the different types of stuck at faults and fault and failure you need to explain. Since it is for 5 marks, this much of explanation is sufficient. Then comes a kind of problem here for the circuit shown in the figure using boolean difference we need to detect s at 0 means stuck at 0 and stuck at 1 at x2. At x2 they are asked to find means we need to generate the uh, test pattern or we can say the combination of input values to detect whether x2 is stuck at 1 and stuck at 0. And also the second thing is determine partial boolean difference for the path they have given. This path uh, is like from x2 go to l point this is l point and then come to n point then p point then f. This is the path they have given to determine the partial boolean difference. So for the given circuit first we need to find the expression what you call it as a network function. So this is the network function for the given circuit in the question. So for that uh, easily you can find the network expression by taking the logical gate outputs and then we need to find the conventional boolean difference of the output f with respect to the inputs here in the question they have asked to uh, find for the x2 node means to x2 only but in my explanation i have taken from the prescribed book here the example is given for all the nodes just look at all the thing or you can concentrate on x2 for the answer of this question. So we need to find out the boolean difference for f with respect to x1 in the sense we need to differentiate df by with respect to x, x1 that is df in the sense that is the output f we are differentiating with respect to the node which we are tre treating that is x1. df by dx1 becomes in this expression if you see here we have x1 bar in this part here also we have x1 bar so the df by dx1 becomes x2 into x3 bar plus x2 into x2 bar into x3 this is the boolean difference for 
f with respect to x1 in the question they have asked to detect s at 0 s at 1 at x2 so we are writing df by dx2 in our answer it will be x1 bar x3 bar plus x1 bar x3 similarly for x3 they have given over here now by look by looking at these three we can write the test values for stuck at 0 stuck at 1 for x1 similarly stuck at 1 stuck at 0 for x2 similarly for x3 how to write for x1 stuck at 0 to check stuck at 0 what values we need to give from x1 x2 x3 means see here in the boolean differences we got an expression x2 x3 bar plus x2 bar x3 means x2 x3 bar in the sense x2 should be 1 x3 bar in the sense in place of x3 it should be 0 x2 1 x3 0 you can see here the first one is x1 second line is x2 third one third line is x3 x2 into x3 bar so x2 is 1 x3 bar in the sense it is 0 we are checking whether it is stuck at 0 so in place of x1 we need to put 1 over here or the second part x2 bar into x3 also we can give x1 will be 1 and x2 bar in the sense it is 0 x3 in the sense it is 1 that is for stuck at 0 for stuck at 1 we need to give x1 as 0 and these values are same with respect to this expression for x1 i am telling but here in the question they have asked to detect stuck at 0 and stuck at 1 for x2 now look at this expression which i am showing with an arrow mark here we have x1 bar into x3 bar it means x1 place we need to have 0 x3 place we need to have 0 so 0 0 we have in x2 place while detecting 0 uh, stuck at 0 we need to put 1 similarly the uh, other value also here x1 bar into x3 is there x1 bar in the sense it is 0 again yeah x3 in the sense it is 1 but to detect stuck at 0 we need to put x2 as 1 so to detect uh, stuck at 1 fault we need to give these two will be 0 0 x2 becomes 0 here these two will be 0 1 like as it is and x2 will be 0 similarly for x3 so this is how we can write the answer for the first part of this in the second part they ask to determine partial boolean difference for this path so let us see how to find that so here the partial <coughs> boolean difference in the sense as uh, the path is given like this x2 through l then n then p then f df by d2 dx2 we need to do it means df divided by dx2 we are supposed to do and it is splitted as df by dp and then dp to dn dn with respect to dl dl with respect to x2 that is how it will be so now similarly as we did df by dp in the sense yeah what is f here f is x1 xr with p x1 xr with p in the sense that is x1 plus p whole bar x1 plus p whole bar can also be written as x1 bar into p apply the de morgan's theorem then we will be getting x1 bar into p bar for this for this f and p for the output na yes nor gate and if you differentiate with respect to p the remaining term will be x1 x1 bar similarly we need to do for uh, dp by dn here this is the uh, p node and this is n node dp by dn in the sense it is p is xr of m and n values so it is m bar into n bar it will be m plus n whole bar again for p apply de morgan's theorem it becomes m bar into n bar so with respect to n we are doing the differentiation it becomes m bar so what is m we need to find out and then uh, m bar will be x2 plus l l is xr of x2 and x3 so this is the final expression we got similarly dn with respect to dl dl with respect to dx2 we got all these then we need to uh, multiply all these four terms df divided by dx2 will be this x1 into this term into this term into this term all four terms we need to multiply finally we will be getting this expression so therefore the test that will exercise the path this will be see here x1 bar into x2 into x3 bar this will be the 
वन ऑफ द सेट आर एक्स टू बार एक्स वन बार एक्स थ्री बार दैट कैन बी द सेट यू कैन से दिस इज हाउ वी नीड टू फाइंड द टेस्ट पैटर्न फॉर द गिवन एक्सप्रेशन आर द पाथ देन द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज एक्सप्लेन स्टक ओपन फॉल्ट इन सीमा सर्किट्स विद एन एग्जाम्पल स्टक ओपन पाथ्स इन द सेंस इट इज लाइक लेट अस स्टक ओपन ट्रांजिस्टर इंप्लेन्स पर्मनेंट ओपनिंग ऑफ ए कनेक्शन बिटवीन द सोर्स एंड ड्राइन ऑफ द ट्रांजिस्टर सो द ड्राइन सोर्स रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ द स्टक ओपन ट्रांजिस्टर विल बी हयर देन द हाफ रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ नॉन फॉल्टी ट्रांजिस्टर मीन्स स्टक ओपन फॉल्ट इन द सेंस समथिंग इज ओपन नॉट कनेक्टेड दट इज ड्राइन टू सोर्स कनेक्शन इज ओपन सो गो थ्रू दिस एक्सप्लेनेशन देर इज ए सपोर्टिंग एक्सप्लेनेशन ओवर हियर एंड also with the example if you see the two input cmos nor gate we we have considered over here it requires two n transistors in the pull down two n p transistors in the pull up so if we take stuck at open fault over here for the t2 transistor suppose we are assuming that this t2 transistor is stuck stuck open open in the sense here there is no connection established between source and drain so if t2 is open circuited then input ab ab uh, for ab if we treat it as 0 0 pull up circuit will not be active why because t2 is broken t1 is on t2 will not be on so that is what the problem occurs over here and then in fact the output remains it has a previous logic state if the previous logic state is 0 0 will be the state it will not be having any path to charge that is how we need to explain this stuck at stuck open faults by taking an example of uh, this kind of example what is fault diagnosis explain one dimensional path uh, <coughs> sensitization technique for combinational circuits with an example the fault detection in the sense it is discovery of something wrong in the digital system or the digital circuit so the fault location means the identification of the fault with components functional models or subsystems depending on the requirement fault diagnosis includes fault detection as well as fault location fault detection in the sense in the system we need to detect that the fault has occurred fault location in the sense we need to find where actually that is occurred so you can see this is the example uh, circuit with set at uh, stuck at one fault so here for x3 you can see the gate 5 uh, will be having an input called x3 this x3 will be set stuck at one taking this as an example here uh, the clear cut explanation is given please go through this here let us consider the circuit and suppose the fault in the line x3 it will be stuck at 1 to test this x3 for set at 1 x5 and x2 must be set at 1 and x3 set at 0 g2 must be set at 1 and x3 must be set at 0 g2 in the sense the output of the not gate here G4, we need to give it as zero so that G2 output will be one and X3 set to zero. We need to test X3 is set at one or not. So we are giving X3 as zero so that the output of this G5 will be one, right? That is how we need to understand. So carefully go through this. I need to write it in steps uh, because of less time. I am not explaining this in detail. Please go through this. You will be understanding how actually this will be. um so for the one dimensional path sensitization technique then the next thing is find the test pattern for the line 6 line 6 in the circuit is this as stuck at 0 for the circuit shown in the figure using d algorithm so the d algorithm will have certain steps like we need to understand what is singular cover of a logic gate what is primitive d cube of a uh, a uh, gate and then we need to understand what is propagation d cubes so and then d intersection we have four steps here uh, we need to understand all these four steps to write this table so first we need to take this fault node this fault line is assuming that stuck at zero so for this if you write the primitive d cube of a fault line 6 will be the output of this g2 gate this g2 gate is a nand gate you can see nand gate truth table here it is and we need to assume that output d 
uh, let us take it as 1 and d bar will be 0. So, d will be 1 only when one of the input will be 0. When one of the input is 0, then only the d will be 1. For 1, 0 it is d, for 0, 1 it is d and for 1, 1 it is d bar. That is the primitive d cube of the faulty path. So, then if we consider the next gate, for that we need to call it as a propagation d cube. So, now we need to write the propagation d cube for g4. g4 is the next gate where the value will be propagated to g4 through g2. So, for g4 while writing the propagation d cube, propagation d cube says these combinations indicate that if one of the inputs of the NOR gate is 0, the output will be complemented of the other input. Means we need to take the set of inputs in that way. So, here also for the NOR, NOR gate you can see if one of the input is 0, the output will be complemented to the other. So, we need to take these three. So, the output will be d bar, d bar, d bar for uh, these three combinations. So, next for the G5, if you write the propagation d cube by looking at the change in the one input changes the output, here is this value 0. So, that is why for the inputs 1 and d means 1, 1, the output will be 0. Then again for 1, 1 we need to take like 7 should be a d and similarly the propagation d cube for G5 is this. Now, by taking these into consideration, we need to select the PDCF that is primitive d cube uh, for the fault that is at 6 uh, stuck at 0. So, by taking this first one into consideration 3 is having 1, 4 is 0, 6 is d, 1, 0, d. The second step is to intersect with gate 4 with propagation d cube for this uh, 1, 0, d taking as it is 3 is 1, 4 is 0 and 6 is d for that g4 will be having 0, d, d bar for 6, 8 and 2. So, 2 will be 0 and 6 will be having d as we know and 8 is d bar. Now, intersect with gate 5 propagation d cube. This is the gate 5 propagation d cube with uh, for these values. So, here these things will be as it is and for that 7 will be having value 1 and 9 will be d bar. So, 9 is d bar because of 8 is having d. 7 is 1 and 8 is d. 9 will be d bar. But here, we will be having a combination of 7, 8 as 1 and d bar. 1 and d bar for uh, the NAND gate becomes the output will be complemented to this. That is why it becomes d. Now, so then we need to look at the other values, other lines like 7 as well as 5. By looking at G3 singular cover and G1 singular cover, we need to put the uh, values for line number 5 as well as line number 1. So, this becomes the pattern to detect the stuck at 0 at particular line 6. So, this is how if they ask you to find the pattern, test pattern for any of the other lines, we need to do all these procedure to find out the test pattern. This should be the test pattern now. By using this, we can find out the stuck at fault at 6. So, this is about module 4. You need to understand this D algorithm clearly to uh, get the exact test pattern for the stuck value of any particular line. So, if you do any small mistake while taking the values, uh, the final test pattern will be wrong. So, carefully you need to uh, write these values for the singular cover, primitive d cube as well as propagation d cube so that you will get the exact test pattern. So, this is about module 4. Let us try to answer module 5 questions in the next video. Thank you.